today on Doomed. A white nationalist has been working in the U.S. State Department for years while also leading the local Washington, D.C. chapter of a white nationalist group. On this episode of Doomed with Matt Binder, we have the full story from the very reporter who broke it. Michael Edison Hayden, senior investigative reporter with the Southern Poverty Law Center, will join us to break it all down. This is quite the story, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get into it, I gotta plug some things real quick. To support this show, check out patreon.com slash mattbinder and become a patron. You can also support this show by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash mattbinder. The former is how you monetarily support the show. The latter is how you just support the show by clicking a button and subscribing to the YouTube channel. That's it. Pretty simple, right? All right. Now, without any other plugs, other than obviously go to uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center's Hate Watch site and read these pieces immediately after this show is over. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to be here. As usual, these are my favorite. These are my favorite, favorite, uh, you know, media appearances. <laughs> oh, I thank you. I really appreciate that. Now, I don't know if meeting me for the first time this past week has yeah. sort of uh, given you those rose-tinted glasses or whatever it's uh, whatever the saying is. Because I am okay. Give money to his Patreon. I think. Oh, wh- why? Oh, maybe I should pull you up on the. Uh, I always forget to pull us up our like our video up on the All YouTube right. right away, but now people can visually see us. And uh, wow, what? A yeah, problem. we also need more content on YouTube. I think. What was just that? In general, we need more sane content on YouTube. We we definitely do. Yes, and I yeah. don't know if this is considered sane content, but I'll take it. <laughs> no, I don't think it's considered sane. Whenever I'm there, it's probably not. But <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, anyway, you know, just, you know, just some fun stuff to start out this incredible uh, story. Uh, I met Michael for the first time along with uh, Jared Holt of Right Wing Watch recently. And we all, it was like the, the, I don't know, the, the Avengers of people who cover this crazy stuff. Yeah. Not as catchy uh... as I could have probably come up with if I thought about it. But on the spot, we are the Avengers of people who cover this crazy stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Holt and I had a, a very eventful weekend. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Now, before we get into the story again, this is this is going away from the personal stuff between us now, but getting to something that was yeah. interesting when I was first setting up this show for today. Uh, now, I use a program called Restream to stream on YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, and Facebook simultaneously yeah. while we're doing this live stream. And... For the first time ever, one of these platforms wouldn't let me use the title that I wanted to use. And it was Twitch. Twitch said I could not use my title. Now, the title of this episode, uh, for the live stream at least, is A White Nationalist in the State Department. Uh, And they said I couldn't call it that. However, when I took out the word nationalist and swapped it for the word supremacist, Twitch was A-OK with that. So yeah. apparently they're, uh, they've, they've smartly banned use of the word nationalist, but someone dropped the ball and didn't think of the word supremacist. Well, how many people, how many white nationalists use the title white nationalist to describe themselves, right? A lot more <laughs> than, right. So it's like, so the people they're punishing theoretically are people like you who are, you know, covering this stuff on your program. Right, right. A lot more of us use that term than them. They would be like, "What? If if at the very if if they even well, wanted they'll to, say get... they'll say they're white nationalists when they think nobody's listening. I mean, they'll 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 use those terms. They'll use, you know, right? Maybe they'll maybe you know maybe they think they've got the the mask on when they say something like, uh, I don't know. There's uh, white genocide or it's okay to be white or not even anymore really that's pretty much giving, that's giving up we, the ghost now right we, we, we've caught up to everything <laughs> after charlottesville you know right. um the you know what um what's uh amusing to me is like the uh 
uh, uh, many of the people that are involved in the right stuff, which is Mike Penovich's website and his organization, which our State Department guy was part of, they were like white guys who were really into Wu-Tang Clan in high school. So I'm, I'm 40, Penovich is 43. And uh, these guys are, sorry, I'm going to turn this off. Um, these guys are like uh, Gebert, Matt Gebert, the State Department guy's 38. So we're all kind of like in the same generation. It's interesting. And I was thinking of like, you know, what Wu-Tang Clan song I would like to, to, to share with him if I could. And I was thinking of like, uh, can it be that it was all so simple? If you remember that song from the, the first Wu-Tang album? Because it's really, before Charlottesville, uh, these guys had a much different time and a much different outlook. They really thought they were winning, you know? Right, right. And it's now everybody's caught up to them. And it's a question of how serious, how serious are you? How much did you really mean it? Because if you really meant it, um, you're going to get it from law enforcement and from everything else now because it's no joke anymore for people. Right, right. No, that's, you know, it's, it, it, I'm trying to think what possible, what, possible terminology they use now to sort of hide it and it's almost they, they, they don't they don't I mean, anymore really right Stephon Molyneux, right what was I mean, that look at stefan Molyneux, right right well he i think you know i i don't know what he's gone through something he's, he's, he's I mean, just he's just basically holding on to a few you know like a, you know his verified check mark and, and things like that but he's he's knocking at the door right now i mean that's what the stuff he's saying he's, right he's, Right. I mean, I've been following him for a very long time. Like, I, I discovered him when I was covering, you know, the men's rights movement for the major Sam Cedar's majority port back in like, yeah. geez, 2012, 2013. And he, you know, he clearly believed the the white supremacist stuff then. But he's yeah. he's not even like trying to even like. Stefan kind of looks like. Uh... Hide it now. Yeah, Stefan looks like a kind of like a, uh, you know, he looks like a like a, a Spider-Man villain from 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 like the '80s or the black costume era. Like, well, the name would be like Doctor Poison or something like that. Right. That's like, that's like he really does like look like which is which is which is you know it's amusing that so many people are just like down with the guy. He's, he person on a personal level, it gives me the creeps. Well, know, the weird the weird thing about him though is yeah okay let me put this as an addendum before I bring this up. Yeah. Uh, a lot of white supremacist, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, how they bring people into white supremacy. A lot of their sort of uh, member membership growing tactics involve yeah. brainwashing people. You know, people who may not have been white supremacist uh, thinking beforehand and then fell into right. this. Uh, but Stefan Molyneux is a rare one who literally had his own cult of followers who weren't, you know, part of the cult of white supremacy they were part of the cult of Molyneux yeah yeah he's like like I said I mean with with many of these guys I was trying to figure out like, like okay well where are they getting an audience from who are they you know getting the audience from I'm an investigative report, reporter I'm not a performer or anything like that so you know I'm just kind of like you know who are the performers that I listen to and who I like and what's going on and I, with most people I can sort of figure it out you know um like Sam Hyde who has like a big fo uh, following on the on the like, you know, on the far right and among white nationalists, like I get it, like because because you know, he's got talent and you know I understand like certain things that he's kind of like undercutting, uh, liberal hypocrisy and things like that. I get it. Um, or, or you know, having. Well, uh oh, Michael, you froze one second here. We'll uh, pull you back up. Let's see. I'm gonna have to call you back. Uh. All right, I'm going to hang up on you. No big deal, folks. I'm, I mean, uh, all right, you froze. For I froze. A, a, lar a large portion. Okay. <laughs> all right, so so let's, let's, let's try this again with, uh, take it from, I guess, Sam Hyde. <laughs> well, I was saying, like, I'm trying to, with, with many of these guys, I try to, like, try to understand, like, how did they get an audience to begin with? Like, what, what is it other than racist or whatever? And I was, I was, I just brought up Hyde as an example of a guy who's like, you know, has talent, um, and um, picks his subject matters in a particular way. And I can understand why, you know, a particular age group responds to that, you know, critique of liberal hypocrisy and things like that. Right. Um, but it was, right. honestly, I, I, I just don't like. It, it, there's no warmth. 
And like I said, he looks like a, a 1980s Spider-Man villain, like a kind of one-off. Right. And it's not, it's just hard to imagine just being like every day being like, yeah, I want to, I want to like hear this guy again, like say nasty things about women, whatever else. It just seems odd to me. Right, right. Yeah, he's, I mean, there's stories of people who, who haven't spoken to their families, cut off their family from, like, completely have cut themselves off from their family because Stefan Molyneux. Yeah. It's it's. It, yeah. I, mean, I mean, again, I, I I get this happens with the broader movement of white supremacy. I'm sure just even in yeah. the broader conservative movement, there's obviously stories of, uh, you know, people's parents and grandparents getting brainwashed by Fox News. I I, I know this happens, but it's just an extra layer of bizarre that there are people who have specifically done this to join the cult of specifically Stefan Molyneux. Right. But you yeah. Know, I guess we could do a well, whole show on Mal well, and you, right? Old stuff comes into this particular story as well, so it's right. a good warm up having. Right. So before we get into that. this, though, I just want to give this one comment though about Sam Hyde. You know, yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Prison Planet has is is infamous for saying the, that conservatives are getting better at comedy now, and it's scaring yeah. the left. I guess yeah. I guess Sam Hyde would be the closest to conservatives getting better at comedy now. Yeah, what I mean, like, Hyde's all, like, I would say, like, I just want to make clarify something. Like, a good portion of Hyde's like shtick is is not not only intolerable based upon what he's saying, but also just stupid. Like, right. I mean, just you know, I mean, he's just like really, um, you know, st you know, stupid, coarse, repetitive, you know, lacking in lacking in imagination. Because there's no, you know, because he he starts inherently with like limits around what he believes, what he thinks, and so, stuff like that. So it makes it like as a comedian, he can, you know he has trouble growing. It. Right. So, so you got to kind of like stay on the irony tip in order to right. survive. And I don't even know if calling him a conservative comedian is accurate. He's more than he's more like just I don't know like a a, a, a shit poster come offline, right? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a shit post. It's it's it comes from shit posting culture. So. But, so Oh, continue. Yeah. No, no, I was just going to say the homophobic stuff is like, I just find really cringe and disgusting. Right. Um, anyway. So let's let's jump into this huge story you've got. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, at this point, I guess it's not too shocking in general to learn that there are people, you know, working for the government, especially with the Trump administration, who have... Uh, sympathetic beliefs to white nationalism or are straight out white nationalists themselves. Uh, but this story is, you know, it takes us back even before the Trump era to really, you know, yeah. to people who, who woke, who, who just basically woke up to the fact that there are still white supremacists among us when Donald Trump uh, became president of the United States. Uh, hopefully yeah. to those people, this will be another wake up call to just that, you know, this has even existed in our government before Donald Trump came to power. So let's yeah. let's jump into this huge report you've got at Hate Watch. Uh, I guess yeah. let's start with. I mean, you pick how you want to start. I mean, I guess we just tell 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 it tell us how you fell into this. I guess right. Yeah. Oh well. Um, I have been building um, intelligence for a while on um, The Right Stuff, which is Mike Penovich's uh, podcast network. But it's also, I mean, you know, the po podcast network also serves as an entryway for a lot of people into like an on the ground movement that he's trying to build. Um, and if you go on our hate map, you'll see that they have chapters, which they call pool parties all across the country. Um, and, um, you know, I have been focusing in 2019 on, um, you know, providing people with the names of a lot of the lieutenants in Panovich's organiza organization. So there was Specter. I did a story about him. He was the uh, guy who created, like, you know, yeah, he didn't create, but he certainly amplified the day of the brick thing where he's attacking journalists or whatever. And, um, you know, and then we also did a story about um, Joseph Jordan, who is uh, of Flushing. Um, uh, who is who's, who goes by the moniker Flushing um, Queens? Just to make sure everyone knows exactly where we're talking about. Absolutely, you know, it's a place that I care about very much, and uh, you know, as a Mets fan, it's just very disappointing. To, right, home to, of home of uh, uh, City Field, right? The Mets. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's like one of the more um, pathetically earnest of these guys. Um, and so, you know, in building that intelligence, you know, over time, you know, that goes back to before I came to SPLC, um, I, uh, you know, have a lot of clues about the identity of a lot of people who are currently um, pseudonymous or go by fake names and stuff like that, right? And um, uh, one of the guys on my radar was this guy, Coach Finstock. Um, and, you know, it was, you would see uh, Finstock in, in the Right Stuff forum. He is, uh, you know, we have, um, I, well, I preserved parts of that forum, you know, SPLC. Uh, preserve parts of this forum that was taken down in May of 2018 because they're afraid identities were being exposed um, by it, uh, which now they are, uh, <laughs> just to say. Um, but, um, you know, Finstock was doing the recording for the D.C. and Virginia chapter of, of The Right Stuff, which is called D.C. Helicopter Pilots. Hmm. And you would see him, um, you would see him on Twitter and stuff like that. So he used... Um, a uh, he used an avatar of uh, the Tom Hardy character from Mad Max Fury Road, and he used um, the Vigo Mortensen Mortensen oh, whatever his name is character from Eastern Promises about the Russian mob. There's a great part in that movie where he where he goes like like you're going to kill somebody, whatever. And right. he, used to, he, used to, he used to use the, the avatar where it's just like a screenshot of him doing this. And it would go by different handles. And one of the handles was like, at never cuck, uh, which I thought was one of the better alt-right handles. Um, <laughs> it's like, for what they, for what they want to do, got the point across. Um, the point is that, um, you know, had strands, had threads about this that we could find in archives and stuff like that. But it started with a tip that I received. And then because I have sources who, um, you know, are close to Penovich and know things about the organization, you know, it was easy enough um, from there to find other people to validate certain things. Um, then um, through open source intelligence work, uh, I was able to take an early handle um, that he used. Um, uh, I, would, I just want to say credit an anonymous person who also flagged this to my attention. Um, so it's not, you know, I don't want to be like, take full credit for it. Um, but the, you know, you go back, um, through the handle and you can see different names that this person used and the earliest, um, you know, the earliest ones use some form of his actual name and the man, and the name is Matthew Q. Gebert. Um, and Matthew Q. Gebert, uh, is a throwback, you know, to a story that Alex Koch did for for Sludge, you know Alex Koch, right, right. I know all the money report. He reports on basically, all, you know, he covers, you know, a lot of financial corruption and and, and connections with That's different cool. organizations that financially, you know, that fund different uh, yeah. movements or or politicians or you know corporations that donate to certain groups or politicians, right. I'm a I'm a big Koch fan, and like I would, you know, I really want to work with them on stories like this, uh, you know, in the, in the future if it can be done. Not to be but confused the with the Cokes. <laughs> yes. It's like the opposite of that. If you know, you talk to Alex and you hear his politics and, and stuff. Anyway, the point is that um, that he was able to uncover just you know people who government employees who had given donations to Paul Nalen during his second run for office. We talked about Paul Nalen when, like, last time I was on the show, right? Right. So Paul Nalen is the congressman for, uh, well, the congressman, whoa, hey. Uh, Luckily, you know, we, we, we dodged that <laughs> bullet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he ran for Congress um, twice uh, under the Republican ticket and started as kind of like an America first kind of guy. But by the second time that he rolled around, he was he 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 over he basically had OD on red pills and was talking about the Jewish question and all kinds of other loony stuff. Right. The thing and, that, the thing that really made it yeah. obvious to everyone that hey, this guy is uh, this guy is not just your generic mainstream conservative floating around, yeah. floating you know, tossing the stuff around and not really full on board. He's uh, the thing that made people realize he wasn't that was when he put out the list. 
of yeah. Jewish oh, yeah. people in the media. Even... What, what was that? I'm, I was on the list. You were, was in Newsweek. you were on the yeah, list. Yeah, okay. I was on the list for Jews in the media that attacked him or whatever. And you're not and Jewish. Was, I'm not. No. Mm. But I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. Like, I don't care. I'm happy to be Jewish. I consider myself an honorary, uh, <laughs> you know, I, like, I, I went to, I mean, I went to all boys Catholic school in Long Island, but like, you know, I mean, you know, it's, I'm, I'm a New Yorker, first and foremost. A lot of my friends are Jewish, so, so I'm happy to, be, happy to be Jewish. However, I was on that list, right. and uh, it was not accurate. Right. <laughs> oh, anyway. Boy. Someone, yeah, someone's got to update their Ju Judar, I guess. <laughs> what was that? If you, if you, my cat is, like, waiting out right now. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, I had cat problems before we came on, and basically he's uh, – He's chilling on his little uh, his little towel that he lays on in the bathroom right now. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, I don't know what he's doing, but like I'm have to yell at my cat in a little bit. Um, anyway, the point is uh, that Gebert was you know gave money to Paul Nalen um, during his second campaign, like when he was kind of in sensation on Twitter for going too far, and this was after he was. You know, after Richard Spencer of all people said that he had gone too far. Uh, and, that, and, you know, that matters because it shows what kind of person Gebert is and what Gebert really believes, that it's a stage beyond what Richard Spencer believes. So Gebert is a foreign affairs officer in the U.S. State Department. And in tracing his whole history, as you can see through the you know investigation, which is really long, um, he said himself that he was radicalized in 2015. Um, and now, I, want, uh, I want you to, I want to really pause there. Cause I want, again, I want to drive that home. Here's a guy who realized and came out at least to himself and other people who believe in the same ideology. He yeah. came out as a white nationalist working for the state department yes. in, in 2015, you know, yeah, Ob guess, Obama's I mean, Obama's still president. That's uh, right. we are not even in the election year yet. So yeah. I just want people to I, I, Trump hasn't even announced at this point, I'm assuming. No, I mean, like, the thing is, this has like less to do with Trump and more to do with Internet radicalization and how right. what it's actually doing. It's, you know, the degree to which it's frying people's brains, basically. Right. Um, so Gebert. Come on, I'm a kind of. <laughs> right here in the middle of this. Well, anyway, sorry. Um, I, you know that I happen to be near the litter box, and like I don't know what he's up to. There. Um, he's so, he's showing he's showing white supremacy what he thinks of it. There you go. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's accurate. So um, basically, it's unbelievable. He's like running now. Okay, okay. So um, so Gebert um, Gebert was I can't stress this enough like an extremely promising and gifted uh, mind. Um, he was in his high school. I mean, you, you're going to see a story, a story coming out tomorrow. I'm going to do another follow-up on this. He was, you know, most likely to succeed in his yearbook from his New Jersey high school. Um, he was, you know, in a study abroad in Moscow and had done kind of a, um, a study abroad in, uh, in, in high school in the Ukraine. Um, and, you know, and had, um, was I, considered a very, <laughs> I, I wonder, I wonder, I'm sorry to cut you off there, but I wonder if that had, it, it, did you see any connections between if that had anything to do with his radicalization? Like, did he come across anything in Ukraine? Now, if there's any Ukrainian uh, people listening and nothing against you, but there is clearly a far right yeah. movement, uh, spousing this stuff in the Ukraine, and it, it, again, goes back even before uh, it, it was, you know, mainstream in Ukraine, before it was mainstream yeah. uh, here uh, in modern day. Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, what I would say is, you know, my first thing is whether I saw a connection or not is no comment is what I would say. What I would say if I were investigating the situation, um, I have limits. Um, you know, I don't have the national security contacts. I'm a, you know, I'm a reporter who focuses on far right extremism, right. Um, and, and though that's where my contacts are, that's that's where my that's where my particular set of skills lies. If I were uh, in the State Department investigating him, and I were in the government, I was investigating him. I would be looking. I would probably be looking if I could at some of the 
some of the connections he may have had in Eastern Europe. Um, his wife is, uh, um, you know, comes from a Serbian family. Um, you know, he's been back and forth, you know, from Russia and, and Ukraine a few times, according to friends who spoke to me. Um, there'll be a little bit of that in the reporting tomorrow. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know. I can only prevent what I do know. I don't have the context to go and try to figure out what he did. And, you know, I have no idea. I don't know what he did with his, I don't know what he did with his security clearance. That's, I have no idea what, what he did, but, uh, but, it, you know, I would be interested to know. And I think that there are some people who will be interested to know that are not, you know, have a better way of looking at this than I do. Right. Um, right. so he comes in and, uh, you know, he, he, goes into George Washington University's program for Elliott School of International Affairs, and he receives a presidential management fellowship. And that is like a, you know, from what I understand, extremely prestigious, and it's really about grooming young people for leadership positions. Uh, so this guy has shown tremendous promise throughout his entire life. And, um, he gets into the State Department in 2013, and I've seen photographs with him and a group photographs with him and a group with like John Kerry and stuff like that, and it's just a trip to see. And he, according to him, you know, says that it, whatever whatever his radicalization, now you can look at his views from before then and, and, and see, and friends have said that he showed signs of kind of turning more and more um, kind of this, this anti-immigrant way of seeing and things like that. But he says that he really becomes white nationalist in 2015, according to him. And you start to use on his Twitter account, stuff like that, the bio description radicalized by reality. And he uses it, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, idiotic in my opinion. Um, and he, um, you know, continues to do his job at the State Department while operating these Twitter accounts and periodically appearing on podcasts. Um, do we do further, we do we know if these podcasts, like Pinovich's podcast, did did, yeah. did these radicalize? Did these pod did, did, did these alt right names radicalize him, or was he already radicalized at this point, and he was just joining them to spread to spread their their ideology? Like, do we do we know exactly? Other than obviously what we just spoke about, things where we don't know yet about Ukraine and stuff, but in terms of just the right. online internet stuff, do we know well, if like, these podcasts were already a part of it or they came later when he was already uh, fully into it? Well, charlatans tend to find one another, and um, and people who you know practice in um, you know selling bullshit tend to find one another very easily. It seems like right. um, so. There's a little bit of that. And then there's a little bit, you know, I mean, some people are resistant to it. I mean, it's like, why have I, I mean, I've listened to more white nationalist podcasts than, than most white nationalists. And, you know, I'm pretty resistant to it, the propaganda, right? So it's not like it's, it, you know, it's not, well, hey, you can say, Hayden, you know, you're, 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 <laughs> you know, you're, <laughs> you're galaxy brain white nationalist. You're, <laughs> I was like, I was like, Mike, I'm not even fully white. And he was like, he's like, he's like, no, 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 you can be white. You know, it's fine. You know, I was talking, he used to talk to me on the phone before he sent me a cease and desist. Right. Who said this to you? Penovich. Right. As long as you're not Jewish. Oh, wait, with him, I guess it doesn't matter either, right? <laughs> you could, yeah, you could join it. Like, he's, just, like, he's just like looking for, just probably just like looking for me to lay off probably. Um, yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's difficult to say like whether it's like, you know, the podcast take him to another level or, or, you know, how did he wind up, you know, becoming going further and further? I don't know. I, I, I can't speculate. I can only say what he said. He said Ricky Vaughn. You remember Ricky Vaughn on Twitter? Ricky Vaughn, right. But he came later, right? He wasn't around. I mean, even if he was around in 2015, no way he had the power then. Ricky Vaughn was really big in 2015. Really? really? I thought it was, I'm trying to remember. He was right. really big in 2015. Man. Right. And, and Twitter was really laissez-faire. He was like, he was sharing daily stormer links and stuff like that. This is like, it's, it's amazing to imagine. I, th sometimes I wish, like, you know, I've done the reporting on Iron March that we've talked about here where I've got a frozen. Thing. I wish I could have a frozen version. I just said, pick a date in 2015 and just crawl through Twitter, just like frozen in time and just go through the corridors of what was there when it wasn't things weren't suspended and just to see 
you know, what everything was and just look at it because it was a totally different website then. Right. And yeah, that dude, you know, I didn't care about Twitter at all at that point. I was like reporting out of India. Like I didn't give a, I didn't give a shit like all about it. I remember I was, you know, 2015 was peak Twitter for, uh, for, yeah. for me, but I don't, you know, what, what Twitter really needs to do. And, you know, Michael Tracy got a lot of shit for saying this on Twitter because he worded himself wrong, but I sort of understood yeah. what he meant. He was upset when uh, Twitter took down one of the shooters uh, uh, accounts uh, last week, last weekend. Uh, I don't remember what was the El Paso shooter or the Dayton shooter. It was but, a date shooter. It was da a date. Right, right. It was the dated one. And yeah, yeah. listen, he got shit for how he worded it. I totally get it. He worded it completely wrong. But what he was saying was, you know, this stuff uh, is up and we could get information out of there that reporters could use to really understand what was going on. And, and I say this, you know, when not just yeah. about shooters, but any account that gets taken that gets taken down from Twitter Twitter in full, you know, they, they have their whole transparency report and social, everyone from Facebook to YouTube to, to all these social media companies are trying to be more transparent in the, uh, in, in, to, to really be fully transparent, they should offer up these archived accounts that have been taken down yeah, to reporters to be able to use for, for stories, for studies, for they would never do it. I've been reaching out to comment to this company for a long time. I mean, I've been doing it since the news. Weekend. I mean, they are just like, all they are trying to do is cover their ass about what right, they're doing. Right. But they do. They're Fa Facebook to give their, them. Their website is just basically a radicalization engine that is blue gab. That like, I mean, come on, dude. Like, we already know, we know the deal. Well, and Reddit... then Twitter makes a big deal about Facebook and YouTube. I will go head to head and just say that, like, you know, to, like, well, Becca Lewis's research is really great on YouTube and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know if I would say it's worse, but like, dude, Twitter is so bad. It's right. it, it's like where a lot of these people find their, you know, find their legs as like extremists and stuff like that. And well, I'm not, I'm not, just, say, I'm not saying this thinking they're going to do it. I'm saying, you know, in a perfect world, yeah. you know, <laughs> just, yeah, which is supposedly for free speech, right? Um, they took down uh, Robert Bowers' like profile immediately following um, the Tree of Life terror attack, right. you know, which he was alleged he was the alleged terrorist there. And they just like, took it down. They just oh, this didn't happen. We don't have Nazis right. on our well, on our website that is, you I know, know. A, like. Whatever percentage Nazi, I think probably fifty percent. I don't know who knows. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will say this though about one of the networks I did not previously mention, but Reddit, when they yeah. uncovered, you know, Reddit gets a lot of shit, and they deserve it for a lot of yeah. the shit that they've uh, they've contributed to this whole problem. But when they found the uh, the foreign interference interference, excuse me, from Russian accounts, Iranian accounts, whatever, they archived that stuff. And they kept it up, like, in perpetuity, just, like, to view. Like, you can't comment on it. You can't do anything with it. But it's visible if you want to go find it to dig into it and find yeah. out what the accounts were posting, what where they were posting it, like, what subreddits they were posting it in, any sort of comments. They left that up for people to see what they found, which, you know, I give them credit for doing because that's something that's incredibly helpful. Dude, I, like, I, you know, like, I am all for preserving bad content online <laughs> um you know i mean it helps me as an investigator um these guys leave a trail and so thank you very much for for what you've done so it's like um i i just said all the amateur sleuths out there and the people who casually do this archive everything you see that you think is bad because in one day i'll be i'll be using it um <laughs> in an investigation that's the truth though i right. really is all right I, I you know, screenshot. I screenshot everything. It's become second nature to me. I see something online. I don't even like. Also, I don't even think on, on on those websites because because like I said, it really helps. You know, people were archiving things about um, you know of these Coach Finstock posts and things like that, and that was a big part of my investigation. It's able, I'm able to cobble together what I could. If I could see it every day what he was doing, I think it might even be more apparent. Um, faster to me than than he was who he said he was and that the sources were accurate but we proved that out sufficiently in the story now we have a photograph of him and tomorrow i should say we will have um a report that someone 
uh, in his family goes on the record, um, I will say, and reported him to the FBI mm. several months ago. This is no, this is no joke. Is this, this the is first? Serious. Is this the first time you've mentioned this anywhere? I think so. Oh, uh, we, we got we, breaking so, uh, news <laughs> on Doomed, folks. This is yeah, yeah. thank you, Michael. This is incredible, yeah. and everyone needs to go to Hate Watch tomorrow when it's published. <laughs> I'll publish. I'll, I'll post it on Twitter probably before it even gets on like like onto our website. I bet. Well, wow, no, so I mean the cameras will be there, but it's like our website is like people find stuff I think from social. Right? Are, are we talking? Yeah. Are we talking? I don't know if you could tell tell us yet. Are we talking uh, extended family or are we talking like family family? Oh, we're family, dude. Wow. Um, yeah, this is like a you know. I don't know. You're gonna find out. Anyway, the point is that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, the stuff is like, I mean, I, I, it brings up an interesting point. We're going on all kinds of tangents, and I'm sure, like, just in case somebody was looking for a train of thought from a while ago, I'm sorry. Hopefully, we'll get back to it. But, like, you know, I mean, this stuff is tearing apart people's families. It's just really destroying families all over the place. And Penovich should know that. I mean, you know, his marriage fell apart after he was, you know, outed. He was, you know, going by Mike, Mike Enoch for a while. And it's like, you know, for what? You know, what are they really? What are they? What are you fighting for exactly? You well, know I mean, well, to get you us know? to get us back, you're gonna make a white ethno state in the United States? But get, come on, well, to you, get think, us... you think people are gonna just sit there and be like, oh yeah, go ahead and do that? I'm not gonna create any trouble for you. It's like, come on, you know, right. use your brain. no, I'm, use your brain. That's a no. I mean, that's a great point. And to get us but back family, on track, family, like, like dude, families are getting totally destroyed by this. Oh, for sure. You, you not just. <laughs> Not just the people we talk about. There are families getting destroyed of just, you know, rank yeah. and file white supremacists, if you could even call them that. Just like, you know, people you'll never learn about because they're just unimportant people following along the ideology and believing this shit. Now, to, to get us back onto this specific guy, uh, Yo. using something you mentioned here, the problem that with Panovich is he needed to find himself a woman like our friend over in the U.S. State Department <laughs> found. Good. Uh, this is good. <laughs> tell this us is about good question, yeah. tell us how do we say his last name again i keep for, i look at the name and i it's gebert i was calling him jaber for the longest time until i was corrected by his family so it's, it's gebert it's okay got it so gebert so yeah. gebert's yeah. gebert's Gebert. wife actually is a major yeah. major part of this all now she's not someone yes. who is, you know I, She's not no, someone she, who will feel bad bringing up because she's not actively involved. No, she is. Yeah. She is yeah. on board, and she also takes. She she's got her own. Well, well, he's what he's Coach Finstock. That's what he was mostly known as, right? Yeah. She's she got her own. By. Go ahead. Wolfie James was what she was going by. So basically, Wolfie James was doing some. God, it's really sad and and and, and diff they're difficult to read. I, I had a friend uh, who's a playwright, a um, very talented playwright, who looked at, um, who read, who clicked on the links in the archives of her her posts. She was doing like mommy blogging and like and blogging for women on the all right on Panovich's site, which is like in, until I guess they took it down. It's, it exists in archives, and like. Um, you know, he's just like, you know, I I can't believe it's not a parody, is what he said. I just can't <laughs> believe this is, like, sincere and they're really doing this. But she did, like, a thing that was, like, seven reasons why all right men are the hottest. Uh, uh, just brutal, painful uh, to see. Just the cringe level is just off the charts. Um, I, I would just, like to say that would be cringe for if it was, if it was like, even, like, the hottest hey. members in the DSA or something like that. It would just be like, please oh. don't. <laughs> please don't do that. <laughs> real cringe shit but it's even more cringe because it's like you, you know like taking the dsa example it, it as a way of promoting the dsa that way it, it would be like oh right oh yeah it's just like rough just very difficult and then there was like how to red pill your woman uh jeez yeah it was like it it was a, like you know using really and and then the number one weirdest like post of hers was she ranked PBS kids shows on a hate score. Oh my god, I need to know. I need to know what the I need to know that list. Impacted, most impact most impacted by by Jewish influence. So it was like the most okay was like Tom Thomas the Train, which is like um Makes sense. As, yeah, we're both parents and like 
that's like, or you're like, oh yeah, the island of Sodor. That's like a, I guess like a, I guess it could like it's a, like a kind of like could function as an ethno state. So, so that's okay. And then it goes down and like in the middle is like Curious George, and then the worst one was Sesame Street. And uh, yeah, that's why that's why Sesame Street, you know, got to got to support it. It's good. good for- because it's pissing off white nationalists. But yeah, it was really funny. It's too, um, it's too bad Dora the Explorer is a Nickelodeon show, right? I mean, otherwise... <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, you just want to go and you're like, do you really want to, do you really want to call the television or YouTube? I don't know what she's referring to. Do you really want to call it YouTube? Like, you want to take the chance under a pseudonym or anything? Do you really want to do that? Because beyond the fact that it discredits you from almost any employment and you just look like a complete fool it's also just it stays with you for life. It's just being this like absolutely insane cringe thing that you've done. Like, why, why do you want to do this? So all these people, it's like, dude, like, why do you want to do this stuff, man? What are you, what are you doing? What are you trying to achieve? Right. Like, I, I, it's like, really? Um, but I mean, look, that, that's, that's part of my brain. The other part of my brain is like, um, they're white nationalists and this is what they do. Oh, did- uh, yeah. Okay, do they have uh do they have kids? Yeah, they do have kids. Oh, um, that's yeah, that sucks. makes it that's what uh, makes it, you know, that's what that's So what we really... were so we reported um, you know, we reported in the second story that had his photograph that like so Unicorn Riot, um, Media Collective, they they went through the Discord links until they could find um, you know, where Coach Finstock was in the lead up to Charlottesville, and he posted cookies, swastika shaped cookies. And I had a source tell me, yeah, they serve those in the house, and there were kids present in the house. Um, I served it, and yeah, I mean, it's 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 really depressing. Um, he like on one of the podcasts, he was talking about how he was, you know, one of the reasons he's having children was to fight against like white um, declining white rates, and it's like. You know, just imagine being a child and like finding that out later. I would feel really just, I don't know. It's just, it's just a really sad, uh, right. uh, the children stuff that makes it really sad for me. And I'm like, I, I, you know, I hope, uh, they leave this stuff and are able to, you know, change their lives. And I don't know, you know, for the kids' sake, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what I hope. I mean, it's like it's such a awful story, but that's sort of what I was saying before. Let's let's actually let's get get into this. Oh, I'm sorry. Continue what you were saying. I don't want to cut you off. No, 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 just like I mean, that's just another example of just like lives being destroyed by this by this bullshit. Right. I mean, you know, the more I see it, the more I'm irritated on just the most basic human level. Like, not even like I'm like angry. It's like we got to do something about white now. It's just like just angry at this bullshit, man. This brain poison that you guys are, you know, chucking around. Right. Anyway, continue. So, so let me, you know, I, I think people listening to this might assume so far that we're talking about someone who's basically just you know active online because we're bringing up screen names and things like that. But yeah. your report goes extensively into the very real life uh, actions and meetings and organizing that this guy. Uh, uh, has done. Now, let's get a little bit into that. These sort of sure. events and parties and get-togethers and gatherings. Sure. I, I have multiple sources spend time in his house. Um, and according to sources, um, you know, white nationalists, um, some of which you would know from online and some of which you would not, uh, would attend these gatherings. Um, to my understanding, based on what my sources told me, these would happen on holidays. Um, one of, uh, the sources who spoke to me attended a, a get together with Penovich and, um, you know, some members of, uh, the right stuff, uh, on, uh, March 17th, uh, 2017, uh, which is St. Patrick's day. And, um, you know, at that gathering, there are a number of people, um, there's a guy who goes by Halberstram and podcasts for a show called uh, uh, Fascination. Uh, so I have some information about this fellow. 
uh, and um, you know a few other people that are in the movement. And um, you know, he was posting them uh, on a semi-regular basis, according to sources. He uh, he was recruiting inside Panovich's forum for real life meetups based upon uh, my reading of those posts, uh, you know, just sort of, you, you, you have this conversation here and then we'll take this conversation offline for a vetting process. Um, you know, apparently he was vetting people and having other people from the movement vet people. So he was extremely committed to the, the, um, to use his own phrase, he uses internet speak in language to show you how how absolutely polluted his mind is on this internet speak. But he was just like, you know, doing this IRL and all. And it's like imagine just like constantly talking in internet talk. Right. You listen to the podcast. It's just like, come on, man, you're like you need to be rehabilitated and get offline for a little bit, man. Um, but uh, that's yeah, a, that's was, a real. That's actually something that's. It's, it's like a pattern with a lot of these guys, actually. It's yeah. it, they're that they're that far gone in terms of just like yeah. basic human interaction that they start using internet yeah. speak in real life, and you know, not ironically or to be silly when they're with buddies. Like we're talking like legitimately using the language they use online because they just don't there's just something there's something not right there's something missing there's not well, there's... One, of, one, one of the most fatuous um trends like in like white nationalist propaganda recently is this whole eco-fascism thing where they're like oh we're like you know we're we're gonna be in nature and we're gonna be like we're going back to nature and we're doing all this stuff and they put trees in their friggin you know like tree emojis in their avatar and it's like dude if you were like if, if you were really doing that you wouldn't be on twitter telling me about it it's like absolutely fatuous and laughable like just clown stuff right. there's a guy like um who goes by the name borzoi i have a little bit on him too um but this guy like basically is the like you know he's you know does like like Aaron's like, you know, kind of for podcasts and things like that is the way I would describe it. And he's like all about, you know, collapse and all these different things. And it's most of it is just memes and bullshit. I mean, that they have in their brains. And it's like this basic thing. It's like, if I, you know, when, if I want to go hiking, I go hiking. Like, you know, if I don't want to be on Twitter, you don't see me for like 13 days because like, I don't want to be on the website, like taking in the brain poison. Like there's left wing brain poison too, dude. Like, there's all kinds of garbage in this, like, you know, in these things. I mean, there are, like, capitalist, you know, entities that are, like, selling you a product. And, like, they want you hooked. They want the algorithms hooked and all this crap. And, yeah, tangent, frying people's brains. Anyway, point is, when you hear when you hear Gebert speak, he speaks about, um, you know, he uses, he uses Internet speak and it's just like he's spoken language. Um, and he would talk about, I'm doing this IRL and I'm doing that, you know. In his podcast. Now, did he did he attend Charlottesville? I know you mentioned how uh, Unicorn, uh, yeah, uh, what was it? Unicorn, Unicorn Riot. They had they had found Discord chats relating to it, right? But did he attend it? Or what? yeah, according to him, he did. You know, I mean, he was, um, you know, he was on a an episode of the Fatherland podcast, is one of um, you know the TRS, you know, the Right Stuff podcast, and. Um, he was talking about, oh, I got out and I didn't get doxxed, um, which is like really brilliant move to go and then tell people about it in a recording, in a public recording. It's, right. Smart guy. Uh, so what, he what, is a smart guy. He's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I mean, I, let's, I, actually, let's actually bring this up now. So uh, I should have brought it up earlier, but I'm just so fascinated with this all that I'm just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're all over the place here. Read the story and then then. Get, let this be the director's commentary. Right, exactly. No, I think that's a perfect. I think perfect. because it's just, the story is very long and it's dense and there are two of them and there's going to be a third one, so. Right. I think yeah. that's a perfect way to describe it. Yes. So so what what exactly was he doing in the U.S. State Department? Okay, so I am not an expert in the State Department, but all I know is that he was a foreign affairs officer with the Energy Resources Bureau. Now, I like what they do um, I don't know a hundred percent. I do know that he had security clearance according to reports that I've read from people who do report on the state department. 
which, so, which, which means so, there was background checks on this guy. Yes. And, um, you know, had he been more eff effective at hiding his power levels, um, as they call it, um, who knows what this guy could have been based upon what I'm hearing from other people that he really could have risen to a very high ranking position in the U S government. Wow. Um, you know, he's the type of person who future Republican administrations could really be very close to the, um, the button, so to speak. He did talk about nuclear weapons as well. He would, he, he oh. was talking about like, we need to have a country, um, with nukes. Nice. Uh, do we like, do we know uh, do we know how maybe not his exact salary but do we know how much uh, someone in his position of government makes? Well, he's making you know according to what I've read, he's he's making you know upwards of ninety thousand between probably between ninety thousand one hundred and ten thousand or whatever. He um, you know I think that's my estimate. That's my you know best guess when I've read Jeez. and yeah and he has like a house in Leesburg. Um, that is, you know, cost that he purchased for $500,000, which is, you know, I mean, he was, this is not like, you know, they, 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 they love to say like, oh, you're going after like working class, like schlubs who just, you know, into white national, the white nationals say this and whatever, but like this guy was not that by any stretch of the imagination. And, you know, I've been to his house and it's like, you know, I mean, it's a pretty, uh, the guy was doing all right by himself, um, which is also scary because you kind of just see up close that how close he was to really getting away with um, something that I think a lot of Americans would consider to be treasonous. Right. What, what is his current situation with the State Department since your report has come out? Yeah. So he's been suspended, according to other people's reports. I'll be able to report tomorrow that he is under investigation, according to a State Department official. So that'll also be out. Um, yeah. So, I mean, basically, like, they're the for, for them to, you know, to take action, you know, I'd imagine without knowing, uh, you know, everything that's going on, I do know that, oh, CNN also reported that the, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee was briefed by the State Department. So this is serious stuff, yeah. And I would imagine, um, I would imagine, um, I'll say, I'll just use those words, that um, law enforcement agencies beyond the State Department are looking into this guy um, because of what he did. And I would be very curious to know what they're finding in terms of what he did while he was there. Um, you know, there's no question uh, in anyone's mind, I'm sure that he is exactly who we say he is. And I'm sure also that he is listening to his lawyers and he is, you know, just sitting back and trying to hold on to this job because I'm not sure what he is going to do. What I mean, I'm, it's not clear to me what he can do otherwise. His wife um, was on Visit Loudoun, um website is like a chair for like the, the tourism thing for Loudoun County, Virginia. So like Virginia, uh, wine, wine country and stuff like that. Right. And so as of August 7th, she was listed on the website. And then after the, the story, they removed her. Hmm. Um, I reached out to them for a comment. They didn't respond to me, but it's very clear that on the archive, there's her name. Now she's gone. Um, there'll be other stuff as well that I'm going to be able to report tomorrow. Uh, you can see, uh, you just hang on for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the wheels are in motion, I think, for this to be a very stressful time uh, for him. And, you know, I think presumably uh, some of the people that he was involved in, you know, in his white nationalist organization, because this is now it's after El Paso. And this is not a game anymore. This is not a joke. You can tell that Penovich, for instance, is under a tremendous amount of stress. Like there, there's no question in my mind, having heard his podcasts up until like Charlottesville and, you know, his most effective thing was to take these really insidious um, and demented conspiracy theories about Jews and things like that and present them in a way that would seem um, to people, uh, you know, like a, a morning talk show or something like that, like kind of like, 
Opie and Anthony or something like that. I don't, I, I never really listened to that stuff. I was like, I used to listen to Howard Stern when I was in high school. Um, but like that kind of morning show, you know, vibe where it's sort of like, right. you know, yeah, we're just breaking down the news. Uh, you know, no big deal. Just that and some Zog conspiracies. And yeah, that's what we're doing. Or whatever, you know, his, his tone. As a, uh, as a side note, Howard Stern, much but, more talented than Opie and Anthony ever ever could be. So you were, li- <laughs> you were listening to the right show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so basically, um, he would do, like, you know, his tone um, after reporting and things like that have, you know, has become far less um, jovial. And it just, it's, it's more, um, it's, it's harshened is the way I would sound. And I would imagine he's under tremendous pressure. Andrew Anglin of Daily Stormer has speculated publicly and without being able to say things that, you know, I might know about these situations, stuff like that. The FBI has been, hmm. you know, on doors related to involving the Penovich. And if that is true, there's, you know, there are people in the white nationalist movement who suspect that names are being given up and things like that. And, you know, that it's not safe to organize in real life. So I would just say that like, you know, there, I would expect there has been pressure on, on Gebert after this, you know, after the story. And I would expect there'd be pressure and there's more pressure um, on Penovich and his organization. And just across the board, because like, if you think about it, like about Trump and people like that, it's like, you know, Trump wants to be reelected really badly. And I think that it's very clear that white nationalism, the rise of white nationalism has become a cudgel, you know, for the Democrats. I mean, it's very effective. You can see Trump in real time taking on water. I mean, it's not at the level of like a recession would be. A recession would, recession, he's like, I think he's just toast. And then you could, we might you could be, run we might, be headed, we might be headed that way. We'll see. It's very, it's, it's, yeah. I think you could run. I mean, you could run my cat wherever he is against Trump in a recession, and and, and the cat would run up the score on him. To be fair, uh, I think your cat would actually be, beat a number of the Democrats in the primary as well. But we'll. <laughs> <laughs> that is also true. Um, but yeah, like you know, even even in an okay economy, theoretically, um, Trump is taking on water with this white nationalist and stuff. People are sick of it. They're just disgusted, you know? I mean, people just find these people absolutely disgusting. And you can just tell, because it's like, you know, I mean, they look at look at this, you see a guy, he's like a 21 year old guy, and he's just like, you know, knee deep in the spray poison that they're chucking around. And like, you know, his whole life is in front of him and who knows what kind of emotional problems he may have or whatever. And I don't mean to sound sympathetic to someone who shoots or whatever, you know, whatever, but you know, you're not looking so much of the shooter, you're looking at the people who are pumping the brain poison into the void for a profit. Right. There are people who are just, you know, I, I just think the average person, the average working class person, white, black, Latino, whoever, is just sick of this garbage. I yeah. completely whether agree. You're, whether you're, you know, for open borders, you know, anarchist, or whether you want, you know, have some opinions about, like, you know, immigration should be controlled in a particular way, whatever. I mean, Obama was, uh, you know, was the deporter in chief, right? So, um, you know, plenty of liberals got on board. No matter what you, what your ideology, I think the, the the overwhelming majority of Americans want to see this type of stuff go away. So there's a lot of pressure, I think, on law enforcement to kind of act that out now. We're going to find out how much these guys really mean it. How much do you mean it? Right. You know, how much do you want this? The problem with what you said, though, is that the the Trump supporters, the Trump voters who want this stuff to go away. Uh, there's a very easy way that they can help make it go away, but they're, they're not going to do that. They, they're, they're, you know, I think it's very clear that there are not enough Trump supporters to push this guy over the top. I mean, there's just not like it's, you know, Trump supporters are not a majority in the United States. And you can see that, like, you can see that from the degree to, well, he lost the popular vote. A. B, um, you can see just in terms of poll numbers and stuff like that, like, you know, when things are down for Trump, they go pretty far down in a way that you can't imagine him winning. When they're up, there's a group of people who are kind of like, yeah, 
okay. Like, you know what I mean? And there are people who may be amenable to a Republican administration and kind of trying to just block out the fact that he's lobbing all this really incendiary, all these really incendiary remarks around and all that stuff. But I, I just, you know, he's, I think he, Trump, there's a pretty decent chance that he's taken on too much with this. We're going to find out, though. We'll, we will find out. The Democrats can lose anything. Speaking of Trump, though, uh, I think this is quite relevant. Uh, apparently, yes. Trump actually had retweeted Geber at some point in yes. 2015. Yes, he did. Yeah, it's kind of funny, right? Like um, that, that must have made Gebert's life. That must have been the most exciting thing that happened to him at least that year. Well, he had a bio. Someone sent me a bio because it's like what's great is like, you know, I reported all this out and because I couldn't I, I couldn't like really leak anything, whatever. I have like, a, a very close circle of people that I trust with a story like this where I can say, hey, this is what I'm working on and just whatever. But I couldn't like go. I couldn't go to the, um, you know, I can't go to the public and be like, hey, I got a guy who's a white nationalist, you know, who is who works in the State Department. It's very difficult for me to go to a wide group of people with that because, you know, can't have it get out in advance. So what happened is I released this investigation. It was all that I was able to pull over within a stretch of time that'd be reasonable for me. Eventually, there's a shit to get off the pot kind of situation where you're building up intelligence and you release a report. It's 6,000 words. You know, it's it's a lumbering, huge AT, AT from Empire Strikes Back of a report. Like, right. you know, and um, in doing that, I didn't get everything. And people have been sending me like stuff like archives that he used where, it's, where, where there's like in his Twitter bio, he wrote like um, retweeted or like whatever by President Trump or something in it. Like, you know, there's something like that. Right. I remember so exactly was so he was he was really proud of it he was really stoked by it and it's not the the only person who was connected to white nationalism who has been retweeted by trump oh, yeah absolutely not not by far not yeah he was like did you retweet somebody who's like white genocide inc or something right um Woo. so so he was using at the time when trump tweeted retweeted him he was Just, using the twitter user what was that I just, for legal purposes, I was like, I actually don't know what the white genocide, somebody else can tell me what, it, I can't remember, but like during the campaign, he did retweet somebody that had like white genocide in their name. Yes, he did. Okay. All You're right. absolutely Thank right. You. Thank uh, you. So, so the, the Twitter name he, uh, Gebert was using at the time when Trump retweeted him is yeah. Q1776. Yes. And his middle name is also Q. Now yeah. we, we I'm about to get conspiratorial here. I, I, might, I think I'm onto something. I think I'm onto something. Uh, so we got a guy who was working within the State Department, working within the deep state, if you will, who is going by Q. Yeah, now I see where you're going here? Now can this be? Could Matthew Q. Gebert? By the way, I would like to also add the addendum that. Way too many of these white nationalists have the name Matthew, and I'm not liking it. Not liking it one bit. Uh, I, I have a problem with Mets fans that apparently Gebert was a Mets fan growing up. There you that go. Was, there, no, that's, it's like, come on, bro. <laughs> that's you too get, surprising. You don't want to. You know, get out. So, anyway. so what are the – oh, my God. My voice just went. What are the, what are the <clears> odds <throat> that he's and I'll help you. Thank you. What are the odds uh, that Gebert is Q? If he – you know, if he were QAnon, and I, I'm going to personally give you my view, so I don't get any any kind of weird troubles. My view is absolutely not because QAnon. Okay, so I'm not deep into the QAnon stuff. You need Will Summer and like um, you know Jared Holt to kind of break that stuff down as much. I think it, like it, it's it's a it's a kind of you know it, it erodes like my my brain cells in a way that I just can't even <laughs> give it looking directly into the sun. But like QAnon isn't it, it's not like super racist, is it? Is it like it's more just about like Trump knowing everything, right? Right. But I mean clearly they don't have a problem with the white nationalists. The whole Q thing is basically yeah. and well, it's they, they want to keep the coalition together. Right. The the whole thing is basically uh Trump is secretly working with uh, uh, members of the deep state to take down this uh, whole big uh, pedophile, global pedophile ring that impl implicates 
other members of the deep state and celebrities and world leaders and basically everyone that's out to get Trump has some sort of connection to this global pedophile ring and they're trying to stop him. Now well, the mem- the- been doing it in Mar-a-Lago again? I can't, I didn't, I'm not like super up on it. I can't remember, but it seemed like something. I don't know. Right. Anyway. And you know, <laughs> they even believe that Mueller, uh, well, there, there's people who, who don't believe Mueller was part of it, but the main the main group of Q people believe that Mueller is actually in cahoots with Trump, and this is all a big right. show for them to to really knock down this pedophile ring. And obviously, Jeff Epstein is part of this. Uh, right. I've seen people bring up that the uh, singer Chester uh, from Lincoln Park uh, was was snuffed out because he was trying to take down the global pedophile ring. And also, he yeah. may have also been uh, John Podesta's illegitimate son because they look alike, apparently. So we, so we really... And JFK Jr. is still alive and secretly a Trump supporter. Yeah. Yeah. So I my, my theory about that would be that Gebert wouldn't have enough time for that, but because he was already doing this. But if he was doing that, then the State Department should just fire him for being a completely delinquent at his job like i mean we're, i'm paying my tax dollars for somebody who is posting his coach finstock and being QAnon. i mean that is like so i mean i don't know i mean i don't know i, I would have a hard time believing that personally based upon looking we, at what he was writing do we know what middle name his middle name q stands for what the the full quinn quinn, quinn. Oh, okay okay quinn okay got it all right so it's not i thought it'd be a little bit conspicuous if it was just Q and no one knew what this Q. Yeah, no, he was like I. I, um, I would like I've I've had a lot of people just message me or be like be like hey great work on this like do you you know do you notice anything weird about him being Q Matthew Q uh, anyway um, yeah I I I I think you know innocent until proven guilty as far as being Q and on is concerned there and and. Uh, um, I would if if he was doing it, then this guy needs to log off now. I'll, I have a theory about QAnon, um, you know, and these type of things, or whatever, and PizzaGate and all that stuff. Um, I think that you know, kind of the plebs or whatever you want to call it, the uh, the common folk, or whatever, have an idea that certain things are going on, um, and they are. And they lack the language to be able to articulate it and the knowledge. And it is 100% true that there are, you know, powerful pedophiles. And we are, you know, there's just, I, well, after the Epstein case, anybody doubt it? But I mean, like, I mean, I think we all kind of suspected that there is some truth to this stuff, right? You know, and um, they just, you know, people are in pain. They're confused, right? Right. Um, you know, there's something going on and they don't know what it is. And, uh, like the, like that Bob Dylan song and, um, but they feel they sense something is, they sense something is, um, you know, something is really fucked up and these conspiracy theories like take hold and get deeper and deeper and deeper into it. Um, they get deeper and deeper into it because of this feeling of powerlessness in being able to articulate it. And, um, you know, I think in many ways, elites are, are, you know, welcome these conspiracy theories until they become um, inconvenient for them and like become a bad thing. Whereas like people like, you know, Trump, who is most certainly an elite, um, you know, uh, you know, unlike his, what, what his followers, um, you know, the way they portray him, um, he, you know, it's very, you know, it's, it's, it's sad in some ways because they are, they're, they're not wrong. Like there is, there are powerful pedophiles and people getting away with um, getting away with literal and uh, figurative murder. Um, and because people can't see it or touch it in their daily lives, and they, do, they can't articulate it. They latch deeper on these conspiracy theories. I think white nationalists also, like, you, you know, like with Zog and stuff like that, like, which is for people who don't know, it's Zionist occupational government. And a lot of these people believe that Jews are like behind the scenes manipulating everything and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, well, there is actually a very substantial uh, criticism to make about American foreign policy and like what is happening, you know, in the Middle East and stuff like that. And, you know, it's sad to see people 
latch on to like this pure scapegoating of Jews rather than actually like analyzing the way, you know, power manifests in, in the Middle East and, you know, in the United States, the way empire is kind of um, going around. And instead they latch on to this completely laughable and fatuous uh, way of seeing. Right. It's, it's sad in some ways, right. I think. It's just like a lot of people are powerless and then they're, you know, they don't know, they don't have the language to speak. Right. Yeah, if I didn't bring up the Q thing I, I, to, you know, to, to take us out here, uh, I don't know what I would have done. I needed something to sort of leave us on a, you know, fun note, I guess. <laughs> it's speculating whether this guy was Q or not, you know? <laughs> I mean, it is a fun note. Um, it is a fun note. I didn't mean to be a downer by just talking about like, <laughs> like conspiracy theories and stuff like that. No, I'm it's glad. Like, you know, someone, you know, I, I, I bring up whether this guy is Q and, and you, you give us a really good yet very serious uh, speech, but I'll take it. It was well... well it was, it, 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 I was in a, a, a different state of mind uh, on Saturday night when I was thinking of it, so I was not necessarily as as clear, clear and sober as I am now. And that's when it came to me, that just that they were like, because it was right after it was Saturday. It was right after the Epstein news, right? And I was uh, pouring one out for your was, uh, your hero, uh, Jeff Epstein. I was, I was <laughs> out on Saturday. It was really and, sad and depressed. And, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, that's gonna that's gonna fuel conspiracy theories for the next. Twenty like lizard teeth in his grin. That dude, like FC. Right. right well, I, I like again. I'll probably go into the lizard people. But he's like, Ugh. like it's like you know. Right. Like, I wasn't. I wasn't ready to do a show on Epstein. I was gonna let the uh, the case play yeah. out a little bit more, but. Being that the case will not be playing no, out. I, I don't know anything. About, I'm here for the entertainment. I'm interested in other people telling me stuff about right. Epstein because I've been to my own shit. So, like, when dude, I just like just give it to me when people are like, I don't even know I'm, if it's real. Or if you're like, he had a boat. It was owned by Mossad. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Just, just tell me. Like, just I don't even care if it's real or not. Just tell me. I want to hear it because it's such a weird story, obviously. And oh, I'm right there. I'm, on, did you see the to, to take us out here on on this? Yeah. This this crazy note, I guess. Did you see yeah. the Daily Mail story today? Now, yes, I know Daily Mail is not uh, the yeah. most legitimate of sources, but apparently, and they have pictures of it, Jeff Epstein in his Manhattan mansion had yeah. a painting of Bill Clinton in the Oval Office wearing a dress. Very weird. Very weird. Very weird. Is that a real thing? That is a real thing, and they have pictures of the painting, by the way. Very weird. Very weird. I'm gonna need to bring on some. Ep- <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna need to. And apparently, according to the report, according to their source, are they gonna bring him out at the DNC just for it to make me laugh? No, I. I mean, I, I like you know. I. I. I like bring him out. Bring out the Clintons. It's, it's gonna be. It's gonna be so funny just they to need see to, that. They need to pretend. <laughs> they need to pretend he doesn't exist for at least till at least till we okay. know for sure what is going on here. Are they gonna bring out Hillary? Uh, you, in your opinion, yes yeah, or no? I, I think they'll. I think they won't. They won't. They'll. They'll bring her out. Yes, I do think so. Dude, uh, Epstein, Epstein. I don't know how you can bring the Clintons out there, man. Just let these. Let like, let's say it's Elizabeth Warren, somebody like that. I mean, do you really want her on stage with with the Clintons? Like, I would not want to do that. I don't want to give Trump that like power again to get back into like the conspiracy theory. Yeah. No, I hear what you're saying completely. I don't. I don't know. They're. I don't know. They need to. I think. I think the Epstein stuff. I need to get an Epstein head on this show to really break it down because it's also something where I've just been, like I said, just following very, you know, not not really too into it yet because I was waiting for the whole thing to sort of play out. But I, I think we're 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 we need to at least see what's going on here because i think we're about to see some big names oh maybe we won't maybe we'll just never see anyone actually go down for this and it'll just always be that that that, I mean, that's, that, that haze just, of question around everybody you know that's what feeds the conspiracy theories that's exactly that is protecting protecting rich people and then there was the story that also came out today where um where his his uh the the, the woman who was uh, running his ring and providing him with the girls who, right. who no one has seen in three years. 
is living in her tech CEO boyfriend's Boston, not Boston, Massachusetts mansion or something like that. And he's denying it. And just this whole weird, crazy thing that I'm going to have to go more in depth to on another show. But folks, please. You, 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 you know, this is how I got, I, I got a white nationalist organizing, you know, and in the state department with security clearance and it's not, I, it's not, I can't compete with the Epstein story because it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I can't, in terms of weirdness, I can't keep up with, you know, it's too. Yeah. Well, you never know where either story is going to go. So let's see. Right. I mean, yeah. later- tomorrow, tomorrow, new story tomorrow. Where can, try. where can people check out the previous two stories and the new one tomorrow, which well, you broke breaking well, news on the set, the show. A you know, family member. SPLC, hey, watch. Yes, family member um, is going to be on on record. Um, and my handle on Twitter is at Michael M I C H A E L E Hayden H A Y G E N at Michael E Hayden. That's me. Um, just you can find the stories there. Um, it's easier. There we go to you go to the Hate Watch site. I mean, do that. Check out our other work and things like that. But uh, that's me, and um, I will provide you with more information when I have it. And I have a very, I think, a bigger story coming out in late September. Ooh. But uh, yeah, but I can't do any. I can't tell you anything about that. All right, well, I think it's. I think it's bigger than this. But like, if it's not forgive me when it comes out just be like oh whatever you know you can say whatever i think it's bigger other people think it's bigger um i am working on it now anytime i have a lot of um there's a very large a substantial amount of material i'm reading through that was um handed to me i I believe you just pre-announced your next appearance on this show in approximately one month We'll, 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 we'll do it. Let's, let's do it. Not, like the air will be a little bit crisper. Let's do it in like full on, Uh-oh. you know, football season, go jets. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk again then. All right. Sounds good. We'll, 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 I'll put it in my calendar and we will definitely do it. Michael Hayden yeah. of hate watch. Uh, yes. thank you so much. It is always a pleasure. It was great seeing you this past week in person. Yeah. And, uh, we should get lunch sometime. Yeah, we will. You know, when I'm when I'm nearby, we will. Let's do it. All right, man. Take care. Okay, take it easy, man. Have a good night. You too. Bloop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what what an episode! What a ep- an episode! Excuse me, I had a weird stutter there for a second. Let's take that. <laughs> Let's let's take that weird stutter I have and let's bring it to the Patreon page at patreon.com slash mattbinder where you can help support this show. You can help the show grow. You can help the show just maintain if, if, if we don't grow it anymore, except for maybe just you joining us. But uh, basically, I ask for no more than $5 a month, but you can give less and you can give more. Patreon.com slash mattbinder, once again. Um, and really, the show is not possible without Patreon subscribers. Yes, this first half is free, uh, but even this first half wouldn't be possible without Patreon subscribers. This show takes time. It takes money to upgrade and buy stuff when I need it. Uh, just to even pay for podcast hosting at the very least, it costs money. And just by giving me some cash... You're able to make me want to do this show. (laughs) And these are the people who are patrons and make me want to do this show. Abigail T, Adam Q, Alan B, Andrew H, R.E.R., Benji, Bobby M, Champagne Kami, Chi, Christine H, Colin R, Dakota R, Dan, Dan M, Dan Kuger, Dave K, Dave Z, Dragon Slayer, Floaties, Froz K, FTW All Day, Greg D, Ian, Curtis J, Jameson T, oh wait, Jameson Test, that's a username, so I'll say it in full, Janelle A, Jasmine H, Jeff K, Jonathan B, Joseph R, Katie S, Katz, 
Koshal. We got a new guy, a new guy or gal there. Uh, Kyle, Lisa D, Max W, user me. Uh, Melissa M, Michael J, Michael M, Mr. Danks, Nicole A, Nam Danette, Romina O, Ryan left his best, Scott R, Stephen S, Struggle Session, TM, Tamney G, Thaddeus A, Tina M, Tom G, Tom M, Will P, Utopian, and Zarin. Uh, You can also, if you can't help this show financially, which I totally get if you really cannot, I don't, please do not if you can't afford to, but you can support this show without spending a dime by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Matt Binder. And it just come to my attention that the sound may be a little bit down since we got the Skype because it's weird like that. So let me put it up now. Uh... YouTube.com slash Matt Binder to subscribe to the YouTube channel and help grow the YouTube channel. Also, go to doomedpod.com for the podcast version of the show. Subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on Google Play. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And also leave a review. Uh, A star review, a written review. It helps let people know about the show. And on top of all that, one of the most important things you could do, no matter what, is just tell people about Doomed with Matt Bender. Tell them about the show. Let them know how much you like it. Let them know how much you hate it. Maybe it'll pique their interest that way. I don't care. I just want them to listen. Follow me on Twitter, at Matt Binder. Follow me on Instagram, at Matt Binder. Follow me on, like my Facebook page, which I should try to... It's, uh, promote more. Just uh, go to Facebook search and type in Matt Binder. Uh, yeah, that's that's the show for today. See you next time. Um, we'll go into the second half of the show. Well, I'll take your, uh, I'll read your live stream comments, take your questions, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more. But for everyone else, see you all next time on Doomed. I'm back. Ugh. Ooh. I've had this cough for for weeks now. For weeks. Can't get rid of this cough. (sighs) Oh, well. Oh, well. Let's go straight to the YouTube live stream comments. Let's get right into it. Ryan. Um, before we even started, goes, this ought to be a good episode. I've been interested in this story since it broke, but it seems like it's kind of gotten swept under the rug. Same here, Ryan, says Grim. Uh, Sarah says, it's totally been ignored because Trump's out here yelling at people. Folks, this is the show where nothing gets swept under the rug. We will uncover and overcover and beat like a dead horse (laughs) any of these stories because that's what we do best on this show. Sarah says, this podcast name is so apt, so apt, right? Thank you. Ellen says, nobody here is sharing it to their Twitter followers. Well, everyone should. Everyone should be spreading both Michael's story and this episode, whether it be the live stream or when the podcast is up in a few hours. Kennedy says, oh, this is a good guest. And Grim says, Mike rules. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mike is great. Grim says, Mike, Jared, and Parker are some heckin' good Nazi hunters. And the greatest part about those three people you just mentioned, they've all been on this show multiple times. Sarah says, I love how Matt looks like he's cut out, like he's been photoshopped onto his own show. I'll I'll fix that eventually. I need to get even more lighting, apparently. Uh, Kennedy says, seeing Matt in the Skype call with the green screen behind him, 
is so surreal. Right, Kennedy was on the Skype call when she was on the show as a mem- a co-host of her podcast, Bad Praxis, when we did the uh, first uh, debate, uh, post-debate commentary of the last Democratic debates. And for all of you who'd like a little taste of what Kennedy saw, there you go. Uh, Grim says, I still need to send Matt a 4K pic of a Gundam cockpit. I feel really bad because Renee sent me a bunch of links to download uh, backgrounds. And I forgot to. And when I went to go do it, the links had already expired. Renee hasn't resent them yet, even though I asked. But I get it. He did it the first time out of the kindness of his heart. And now I'm asking him to take the time to do it again. I get it. I blew it. I blew it. Uh, let's see. Are you guys talking about, uh, in the chat, they were talking about Stephen King's uh, rape and incest comments today. Eh, eh, I don't know if I want to... I know I bring up stories with you guys here in the second half of the show, but I don't know if I want to talk about that one right now. All right, quick, quick summary. So Stephen King wrote that uh, uh, he doesn't know if the human... I, I, I didn't pay too much attention to it. I just read it in passing. But apparently, he wrote that humankind would not be where we are today or maybe not even exist if it wasn't for all the rape and incest that went on in this in the world throughout history. Mm. Mm. My favorite Stephen King moment is honestly... Steve King moment is honestly uh, when he said that uh, the people crossing the border are all drug mules with uh, uh, calves the size of watermelons. That was uh, that's my fave. That's my fave. Ooh, that guy. Even Liz Cheney came out and spoke out against him. I'm not gonna give her any props, but I mean. When you've lost the Cheneys. Mm. Ryan says, Matt, you could definitely do a whole episode on Stefan Molnir. And you should have the QAnon Anonymous Boys on if you do. They recently did an episode and it was good as hell. Right, I'm definitely going to do a Stefan Molnir episode. The QAnon, uh, uh, Trevor from QAnon has been on this. Travis, uh, my bad. Trevor, Travis, all the same. No, I'm joking. Uh, he's great, but he's been on this show. He, he was the first show of the year, talking QAnon. Uh, but definitely, they'll be back on again for sure. I don't know if it'll be for the Stefan Ma new episode, but we will definitely have them back on, and there'll definitely be a Stefan Ma new episode, and maybe even those two will overlap. Politics Understander, Mets baby, love the Mets. Yeah, they're my... There, I'm not a big baseball guy, but I do like the game, but just not a big, you know, just don't really watch sports. And, but Mets is the hometown team. And I'm, when, I mean, when I mean hometown team, I don't mean New York. I mean literally the, the, bo- the, 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 the borough. You know, Queens, Flushing Queens, and you guys know me, Queens. Yeah. You know, can't be a Yankees guy. I'm not, I'm not in the Bronx. So, yeah. Uh, Dean Argent on Periscope. Wow, huge audience you have here, guys. That's always the troll's favorite go-to uh, diss for this show in the YouTube chat uh, to mock the number of viewers on the live stream. Well, I'm actually, according to the YouTube stats and the restream stats I get, actually, uh, my audience for the live stream is more active than the major- majority of YouTube, uh, the YouTube uh, live stream audience. So I'm quite proud of that. It's not a numbers thing for me. It's a quality thing. And you guys listen to the show and you interact and you you listen to the show. So I respect uh, that my listeners are among the best, most active listeners on all of YouTube. Uh, in terms of the quantity number, uh, I just don't have a big YouTube audience quite yet. It's been growing. We're, we're almost at 2K subscribers. It's not huge at all. 
uh, many more, uh, already multiple thousands of people uh, uh, regularly listen to the podcast. This show started as a podcast. I, I'm known mostly from my Majority Port time as a, pod, as a podcast. Uh, the Majority Port YouTube when I was there, it was big. We had tens of thousands of subscribers, but we weren't in this 600,000 subscribers they got now. The Majority Port audience at the time I was there was mostly a podcast audience. Tens of thousands of subscribers on the, uh, the, uh, the podcast then when I was there. Uh, regular subscribers like that was the that was the minimum uh so growing out the youtube channel is one of my goals and one of the things i'm working to do and i'll grow that but yeah props to my listeners according to you the youtube stats i receive when they send them out every month the most active of the live stream audiences among the most active i shouldn't say the most active Uh, Renee says, New York City smells like piss. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, because Kennedy says, a history professor of mine told me Europe smells like piss. I've never been to Europe, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, parts of New York definitely smell like piss. So it adds to the charm, you know? Rob Plutonium says, Nazi tattoos on women are are indications of risk of herpes, direct correlation. Hmm. Sarah says, I had a guy hit on me on the bus and invite me out to his compound in Hayden Lake, Idaho, a notorious neo-Nazi compound at the time. He flat out told me. Rob says, Nazi herpes are the worst. Hmm. Kennedy says the only people in America who think NYC is superior are teenage gays and people who actually live in NYC. Excuse me. Only New Yorkers can talk shit about New Yorkers. All of you other people in New York City is the best. I'll tell you right now. Hmm. Rob says I pay YouTube 10 bucks a month to remove all ads. Worth it. Oh, I forgot to plug the YouTube Super Chats. Damn it. In the first half. Oh, well. Next time I'll get him. Uh, if you're listening, feel free to throw me a super chat. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Someone did. I'll read them right now. Uh, let, me get, let me pull up the super chats. Because YouTube's got to get better at putting the super chats in front of the actual streamer. But beyond that, there is an actual area I'm going to right now where I can read only the super chats. So let me get to that. I should have this open throughout the show, usually. Wow, Rob. Jeez. Uh, thank you. Rob... Plutonium throwing me a $10 super chat that simply says, what about this? Thank you, Rob. Much appreciated. Uh, super chats are a great way, by the way, to throw me like a one-off. If you are already a Patreon subscriber and you want to, you know, you don't want to up your 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 monthly uh, patron subscriber level, but want to thank me for a specific episode, super chats are a great way to do it. Or if you just can't afford the the monthly uh, patron subscription and you want to thank me for a one off, the same goes for you guys. Uh, Sarah says, when you OD on red pills, you start stammering out Molyneux phrases. I should pull up some of, uh, 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 Stefan Molyneux's craziest YouTube, uh, uh, vids, portions from it at least, like clips for the, the Stefan Molyneux episode. Send me some if you have any in mind. I have a few off the top of my head. That's how much I, there are earlier ones though, like, from the early days of 
Uh, Renee says, uh, uh, Mike's cat is Praxis. Scratching the shit out of white supremacy, says Sarah. Right. Uh, Rob says, Ukraine is so fucked. Regular, normal Ukrainians are fucked. Putin-linked Ukrainians are safe. Red of Bodom. Red of Bodom. Excuse me. I missed the of part. Uh, Nazism is pretty bad in Ukraine at the moment. Rob says, yep, most of Eastern European countries are fucked with fascism. Right. I'm going to do an episode on that too. Uh, Midnight Pizza Man says, does Matt always scratch his head this much? Was I scratching my head a lot this episode? Shit. Shit. Sorry, guys. I guess uh, all this uh, white nationalist talk makes me itchy. Oh, Rob throwing me another 10 bucks. Love you, Matt. Wish you were on... Cedar. Well, if you miss me on the majority report, I can tell you that I will be on another episode soon. Very soon. I will let you guys know exactly which one very soon, but let's just say it's it's sooner than you think. I'll be back as a guest on the majority report. Uh, Clyde the dog one on Periscope says, dude, why do you have so much hair? Because I have so much hair. I'm going to take full advantage of this because one day I'll probably be bald. And I won't have any hair. And then you'll say, dude, why do you have no hair? Rob says, Matt had a scratchy head today. Jeez. I did not notice I was itching my head. It was my thinking. Uh, I was thinking so much today. I was deep in thought. That's what happened. Uh, 101031 uh, Mickey on Periscope thought I was talking about Stephen Miller. Oh, did we not mention Gebert's name enough? I mean, for the most part, outside of the white nationalist movement in D.C., he's not a, a big name. It's his the fact that he worked for the State Department. Is what makes this such a such a story. Rob says, "You guys think a buyback program would work in the U.S. for guns? It would definitely work to an extent. It would definitely people would definitely do it." For sure. Uh, Dean Argent uh, knocking me again. Audience is building up to MySpace personal page levels now. Well, all together, when you count the people who are watching on YouTube and the people who are watching on Periscope and Facebook and Twitch, had about an audience of 100 throughout today's show for the live stream. That's not counting the thousands and thousands of people who are going to download the show when it comes out as a podcast in a few hours. So, would I be happier if it was bigger? Absolutely. But I'm quite content with where it is now. Dorian says, I think a buyback program would make a small difference. Right, it's better than nothing. Politics says all buybacks would do is leave the left even further behind. I don't know about that. Uh, Dean, our, looks like our, our, our troll for this episode, says uh, foreign interference when I brought up the foreign interference that Reddit archives. I thought no one was foreign. We're all the same. Well, foreign as in foreign government. That's foreign interference. Not foreigners, like literal people who are not from this country. Uh, Truth Hurts 2K says, I don't care if the shooter supports Antifa, but that doesn't happen. Or white supremacy, that's what happens. 
we should be able to see it, talking about the posts and the accounts. I don't know about everybody should be able to see it, but people who are reporting on it and doing uh, research on it should be able to see it for educational purposes, for sure. Uh, Clyde the Dog One says it's BS to talk about foreign interference. 99.99% of interference is corporate interference. Well, while I agree with you that corporations interfere much more, uh, it's not BS to talk about foreign interference. It's a thing that, that's happening, and it's certainly worth talking about. If you want to talk about the proportionality of the threat, uh, sure, that's a conversation, but it's not BS to talk about it outright. Uh, Bobby on uh, Bobby forty six on Periscope. Russia won the election. I don't think that. Listen, did they play a part? Mm, yeah. How much of a part did they play? Uh, my opinion, honestly, not as much as people think. Uh, voter suppression efforts that are spearheaded by Republicans hurt a lot more. Uh, Hillary's emails, uh, specifically. The one, the email scandal that she uh, brought upon herself by having emails on her private server uh, were a major problem. Comey bringing up that email scandal thanks to Andrew Weiner in the final weeks of the election certainly played a huge part. So did everything contribute? For sure. But I think those latter three that I just mentioned contributed a lot more than Russia. Truth Hurts 2K says, does Hate Watch look at hate groups on the left and right? Well, I don't know of any hate groups on the left. I mean, are you talking about maybe like extremist animal rights activists or like extreme environmentalists or something like that who haven't really been a thing for, for many years. Um, I, 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 like violent uh, uh, environment. I, I don't even know like what, you're, what could possibly be in that group because there's... I mean, if you're bringing up Antifa, which I'm sure is what you're alluding to, I mean, a... First of all, there's no group, there's no like organization of Antifa. It's just literally anyone who considers them an anti considers themselves to be anti fascist. Um there's a group who shows up to counter protest and engages in tactics to protect marginalized groups and people who are counter protesting peacefully. Um do, do they count as a hate group? No. Antifa is literally there to counter-protest, protect marginalized groups that are peacefully counter-protesting white supremacy. Uh, do they uh, get physical? Uh, yeah, they do. And uh, I think practically any time they do, there's uh, proof that shows that they were doing it in defense of themselves or another group. In self-defense. But... That's another that's another conversation. Not, not, not enough time to get into that. Clyde the Dog One followed up with the what hate groups on the left. Right, right. Uh, Politics Understander. An actual quote from a libertarian I know is that an assault weapon ban would make him a criminal. That's the mindset. Not that they'd be breaking the law, but that they were targets. Well, also, I don't think an assault weapon ban would be retroactive. I'm pretty sure, uh, I mean, I'm positive that the assault weapon ban that's being discussed would be just to stop selling them. I mean, if you own one, you'd be sort of grandfathered in. They wouldn't come and confiscate them from you. Would there be a buyback program? I'm sure to encourage you to give it up, but there wouldn't be any, you know, forceful actions taken by the government to take your gun. Grim says Antifa is love. Uh, 
Zootmaster says, am I completely morbid to want national gun sales stats for this year right now? No, it would certainly be interesting. Uh, Dean says, the SPLC never ever tears apart or interferes with its opponent's families. Well, actions have consequences, and if the SPLC is doing their job in reporting things, such as a white nationalist local chapter leader is working for the U.S. government in a fairly high position, being paid a fairly high salary using the American people's tax dollars, that is for sure something that the American people should know about. And if their family is affected by the consequences of this news being covered, then that's on them and their fault lies at their choices that they made in their life, such as becoming a white nationalist and actively partaking in the white nationalist movement. So, do I feel bad for the children who were completely innocent in the matter? Yes. Do I feel bad for their parents, both husband and wife, both Gebert and his wife, who are both actively involved in this? Not at all. You, you know, you, you they got what they had coming to them. Grim says only neo Nazis are mad about the SPLC. Zootmaster says you already know the NRA profits from mass shootings. Well, yeah, their membership. I mean, gun sales go up usually, and I'm sure their membership sees a spike. Even though they're hurting now, they've badly spent, you know, mismanaged their finances. Because it's all, it was all, it's a grift. It was to, you know, make a few people at the very top of that organization rich. And to empower the, the, the gun manufacturers. So... Ellen on the uh, the kid show portion of the program earlier. Curious George is by two Hitler era Europeans, maybe Jews, about a guy with pet monkey, grown man with a kid, basically. Brett asks, "Is Matt wearing a crash shirt?" I haven't heard them in a minute. Uh, yes, I'm wearing a crash shirt, Brett. That is absolutely correct. Sarah says, oh, geez, a whole hateful family watching Thomas the Tank Engine and hating the Jews together. Right. It's it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Thomas is clearly not. I mean, if you watch the show, it's a heartwarming kid show. But I get why it would be the white supremacist show of choice if they have to watch a kid show. Right. I mean. Horse or top of hat. Dorian says Union Riot, Unicorn Riot is badass. They have a YouTube channel that streams protests and direct actions all the time. Right, for sure. Union Riot's Unicorn. I keep saying Union. I'm like Unicorn Riot is great. Sarah says I found them during Ferguson. Love Unicorn Riot. Politics understand there says America is good at war is one of the dumbest goddamn myths. Right, right, right. America hasn't won a war since 1945 and they needed the Soviets to bail them out to do it. It's, it's right. Yeah. Oh, a lot of comments today. I gotta I'm gonna just breeze through and grab the uh the best ones because I'm not gonna be able to get through all of them. No, the show is growing. So, you know, we went from me being able to go through the whole live stream and making sure I hit all your comments and questions to, uh, you know, eventually I might have to just, I mean, this isn't going to be for a while, obviously, because there's still not that many, but maybe one day it would just be Super Chats. But for now, I'll just breeze through and, uh, you know, scan through and grab some of the best stuff. 
Renee, what do the Bender kids like to watch? Well, Ezra, my four-year-old, is big into uh, PJ Masks, a show about uh, three kids who uh, become superheroes at night. Uh, PJ Masks, like pajama masks, get it? Uh, so th- he's really into that show. He also likes this show about monster trucks on Nickelodeon called Blaze and the Monster Machines. That show's not so great, but he likes it. Uh, he watches a bunch of shows on Nick Jr., like Dora the Explorer, the show uh, Hey Dougie. Um, oh, there's this song with, there's a show with a really good theme song, uh, Abby Hatcher. Catchy themes. All these shows actually have really good theme songs. But uh, Abby Hatcher has a very good theme song. Gets stuck in my head all day when he watches it. He actually fell out of Sesame Street pretty quickly. He got into it early and got out of it early. Which is too bad, especially after what we learned from today's show. I have to try to get him back into it. My dad jumps into the comments to say that I sat Matt in his high chair, put on Pee Wee's Playhouse, and would feed him because his mouth was agape in amazement. The funny thing is, he's actually just talking uh, a couple months ago. <laughs> no, I was when I was a kid, I was very into Pee Wee's Playhouse. I still think it's a great show, actually. But Pee Wee Herman was my favorite when I was young. And I still think, again, he's great. And uh, what he got, what his career was ruined for is bullshit. Bullshit, I tell you. Sarah says, oh my God, I used to love Pee Wee's Playhouse. I still have the theme song in my head. It's a great show. Midnight Pizza Mon says, does anyone know how long it took Matt to grow his beard? It took me very long. That's why it's here to stay. Um... I've always been uh, slightly uh, younger looking, not even slightly younger looking, very much younger looking than I actually am age-wise. So, you know, when I was on the majority port, the beard was still coming in, just, uh, you know, in my early to mid-20s. And then the late 20s, I got the full beard, and it's still not, you know, it's still not, doesn't grow, like, you know, I would love to have, like, a full-on, like, I don't know, like, Trying to think of like a Daniel Bryan, uh, a, a Bray Wyatt, name dropping wrestlers. Let me give you a, a someone who is more broadly known. Like a, I would go for the full on like ZZ Top beard even if I could do it. But it's just this is you know this is what I got. Kennedy says, uh, there's a kid's show on Amazon with Weird Al in it called Little Big Awesome. And when I watch my niece, I feed her while she watches it for the same reason. Ah, Weird Al, there's a kid's show. Little Big Awesome. I got to show my son that. Uh, Dorian says, guys, I think Dean Argent might not, might be a Nazi. Well, I'm not going to say that because we don't know. You should say allegedly if you want. We don't know. Listen, I'm not going to. To say that about Dean, he clearly has right-wing leanings, uh, but unless he comes out and says it or gives me more, uh, more information, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna throw that at him, quite yet. Uh, the protector says TRS still has a fairly active YouTube channel as well. TRS Radio. What's that? Is that a what? What kind of show is that? What kind of show is that? Hmm. Let me see. TS Radio? Is that a uh, right wing or is that a. All right, I can't find it right now. You let me know. Uh.
Renee, it was odd seeing uh, Cornell West on Rogan because Antifa saved Cornell West's life. Uh, I haven't watched that one yet, but, you know, if you're going to go on Rogan, you got to be prepared. And someone like Cornell West and Bernie Sanders, are they're, they're perfect for that show. Renee says, hate Opie and Anthony, but it opened my eyes to Gervais. Midnight says, come town will always be better than Opie and Anthony. The Protector says, where is Andrew Anglin? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. X Nilo says, hey y'all, doing tonight? How are y'all doing tonight? Is this Matt's regular stream time? The show is usually either on a Wednesday or Thursday night live, either around 9, 9.30 p.m. start time, Eastern. Uh, sometimes we'll do a show on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Rarely on a Monday or Tuesday, but it's happened. Usually I will try to announce it at least earlier in the day at the latest, I know. But, you know, I try to keep the show as relevant as possible with the news cycle uh, because of the way these things work. So usually I'm confirming a guest day of. There's some opportunity where I have a guest a day or days in advance, but it's not as often as uh, the opposite. Best thing to do is follow the Patreon page, follow me on Twitter, and uh, that's it. <laughs> I will really try to figure out a way to get this out more. Maybe maybe I need to set up, I, I know I've been throwing around the idea of a newsletter, but it's just you know a time issue. But maybe I'll set that up and, and shoot you guys an email every time, you know, as soon as I learn things that you would want to know about in terms of show updates and maybe even news, breaking news items or things I find online. I'll highly consider that. Uh, Rhett says, I listened to Come Town and the first few seconds were horrible, so I turned it off. Grim says, I, I, I never listened to Come Town and won't bother. Uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll talk about that another day. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting tired, but we still got a few more comments. A lot more comments, actually. I need to. Evelyn says, I'm kind of confused, but always thought far right and left meet. Like a big circle with the circumference meeting. No, no, no. That's horseshoe theory you're talking about, and that's not. No, 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 no. I mean, because even that that guy on the West Coast, I can't remember, can't remember, but the anarchist who recently was killed for um, attacking an ICE uh, building, an immigration building. I, I, if I remember correctly from reading it, his attack was only on property. He was attacking their cars and and breaking windows and stuff like that. I don't believe he was aiming for people. So, I mean, again, that's even the most violent extremes on that, on that end of the spectrum is still different. Rhett says, Madrid is a problem for the Catalan, the Catalan nationalists, but the Catalan parties are meh. Um, we need to, well, we need to talk about some of this stuff. Uh, I have a very close... Uh, friend slash family member who could probably actually break some of that stuff down, but probably there, there's probably also people who are who study this stuff. Yeah, that's definitely an idea for an episode. Absolutely. Q 
Kennedy liked my joke. Shit, we found Q. Called it earlier in the chat. Dank says, this is Q, QAnon. Not QAnon. Rob says, Q equals dumb as shit. Right, it's dumb as shit, but also can't get enough of it. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Uh, we got some baseball talk. Politics Understander says Yankees and their fans are trash. This is fact based. They chanted "Send her back" at Yankee Stadium the night after it was chanted at the Trump rally. Did they really? Didn't see that. Jeez. Renee says they're racist re-immigration Q heads. Right. Of course. Right. 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 But it's not technically a white supremacist. Adja uh, adjacent, yes, but it's definitely not a white supremacist movement itself, in and of itself. Zootmaster says, who thinks QAnon is the Ruskies? No, I don't think it is at all, actually. I really don't. And I think there's some some hints to who it could be, and it's not the, the Russians. This is a homegrown thing, baby. Uh, can't find who said it, but someone said Q is distraction from the Epstein stuff, right? Right. Uh, Q Grim says Q is an anti-Semitic distraction from capitalism and Trump. Rob says Q is a way for mush mush brains to feel powerful. Pothics on the standard says, I get the dirtbag girls confused because they're all the same person. Kennedy says, you're absolutely right. Amy, Amber, Anna, and Dasha are the same person. I know who you're talking about. People listening to the show might not. Uh, well, we could talk leftist inter-drama stuff and, 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 and debate that stuff. But that's not for now. So I read it because I find it, you know. But... Rob says, I doubt Q is a Budweiser aficionado. I suspect white wine with a slice of cheese. And then he says, I suspect fash infiltration. Politics Understander says, irony can be good, but sometimes it leads you to rob your wife's GoFundMe for $3,600 in vape juice, so who can say it's actually good or not? I have no idea what you're talking about, politics, but please, I'm extremely interested to know the background about what you're talking about. Please drop it before I end this episode. <laughs> uh, Iowa Dirt Farmer says, Go Hawks also. Whitney Webb from Mint Press is the best Epstein expert to get on for a podcast, in my opinion. Especially if you got that real Epstein brain. Whitney Webb from Mint Press. I gotta tell you, I really have not been following the Epstein stuff too closely. So I am gonna write that as a note and look into this. Whitney Webb, thank you. Dank. Kennedy says, I keep meaning to become a Patreon supporter. Only so bad praxis could come on. Well, come back on. Well, Kennedy, I hate to break this to you, but um, only the paying members of bad praxis can come back on. So for the full reunion of the entire podcast, that's three paying Patreon members from the podcast. Sorry, that is the breaks. <laughs> politics says I should be clear to get back to work soon and become a member thank you politics no rush take care of yourself first please Kennedy Crouch says uh, 
Bad Praxis is only making $15 a month, but we're working on it. Also, I'm dropping out of college, so I have to get a real job. Well, Kennedy, you do you in terms of uh, your career, but uh, you guys are making $15 on Patreon. Patreon. There's three members of Bad Praxis. Uh, I said all three people need to become Patreon subscribers. I asked for $5 a month. 15 divided by 3, $5 a month. There you go. There's your, I just uh, solved the problem. <laughs> just uh, divert that Patreon money straight back to, through Patreon to the uh, Matt Binder Patreon. Rob says, Matt needs to go back to Cedar, in my opinion. Ah, listen, I would love to be back on that show. I don't know how much Sam pays nowadays. I don't know if he could uh, afford me to be or, or working for the show. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's why I left, to be honest. I mean, everyone knows that. Uh, Sam said it on the show. You know, I didn't leave because I hated the job. It was one of the best jobs I've ever been done. I loved working there. I love Sam. love Michael. Even love the people that came after me. Even the people who came after me are no longer there. Kelly, great. Uh, Jamie's great. Uh, Matt Leck, new Matt, is great. Although he should get a new first name so it doesn't confuse people. Because still to this day, years later after I've left that show, people still confuse both of us. Some people don't even know we're two different people and think the same Matt's been there all along. Can you believe that? How insane that is. And I'm not just making that up. People have contacted me and let me know that. As a guest, though, Sam should definitely have me on more. But I'll be on again soon. I'll let you guys know. I'm not just saying it like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll be on soon. I mean, there's a, a date that, that's planned for me to come back on. I'll let you guys know really soon. It's coming up. Dorian says, don't fix the backdrop. It's the doomed aesthetic. Uh, Dorian also says, what did uh, King think he was accomplishing with that remark? Sarah says, maybe Steve King's family tree is a straight line. That's where he gets it from, <laughs> right? Whew, that's a good one. Right, cantaloupe calves, says Dank, right? Oh, it was cantaloupe calves, right? I said watermelon calves, right? Right, it was cantaloupe calves. Makes it even funnier somehow. Something funnier about cantaloupes than watermelon, right? I'm not going to read this, but in the chat, to those who are talking about hard times and, and battles with depression and stuff, know that I love you. You're always welcome here in the Doom chat. We can chill, we can chat. You know, there's the Discord channel for you guys to jump in. Just at me on there to make sure I see it. Always, always open to conversation. You know, we'll have, we have fun. I enjoy seeing you guys in the chat. And trust me, I know the names I see. The regulars. Lord Irinion, having friends to share in the struggle is indispensable. Absolutely. Lord also says New York jails smell like pee. Well, that's, I don't really know about that. Never been to jail. Maybe one day though. Not 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 counting it out. Never know. Kennedy says, Yay, casual mat day. Rob says awesome. Misha says, Yay. Jay Jariba says nice. Talk about me coming back on uh, Majority Report, right? My dad says if he ends up like me, his hair is doomed. Thanks, Dad. But also, nice use of the show name. Props, for sure. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't bring up the... I wanted to talk about the Bernie media thing. The Bernie Sanders media scandal this past week. There'll be another show. Maybe I'll do a YouTube video. I'm not promising. I'm saying I want to do these YouTube videos. Just haven't found the time yet. I got to figure it out. Definitely want to do them. It's, to me, I think it's the best way to grow the show. I got to do them. But yeah, we'll definitely talk about that either via that video a video or, or next episode for sure. It's not going anywhere. Rob says Antifa only shows up where fascists show up. Right. Lord says a lot of what Antifa does is intelligence on fascist groups and to help people get out of fascism. Right. You have to be prepared to resist fascism physically because the ideology of fascism entails gen genocide. Great. You, know, you both are dropping great points. Dropping knowledge. Brian says, I really hope the war on guns doesn't end up like the war on drugs, just brutalizing more brown people. Bite me on Periscope says, nothing at all that the Clintons didn't do. Not sure what you're talking about there. Exactly. I mean, I could guess a number of things. <laughs> Lord says, neoliberalism leads to fascism. That is how democracy dies. Ryan says, "Just uh, Dorian says, democracy dies when Matt only reads super chats. Ryan says, just super chats. Boo. I don't. That's, listen, I'm talking about, listen, if you look at a majority report uh, live stream, there's no way he's figuring that he's following that live stream chat. It's moving too fast. I'm talking if it ever gets to that point, super chats are going to be the best way. Come on, you know I'll read. There's, I just got to figure out a better way to to take to, to find these best chats, the quickest way possible. The freebie ones, even. Rob says fascism hates Sesame Street. Dank says Nick Jr. was good when I was a kid. I used to watch that in Gullah Gullah Island. I remember Eureka's Castle. That was one of my faves. Uh, uh, Thomas over on Facebook says, check your tweets, Matt. Remike from PA. I will. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mike from PA wants you to come over to his Twitch stream, Central Committee, to talk about the Epstein death and conspiracies. Sure, we can do that. Tell him to contact me and we'll we'll figure that out. Brian says, Matt's a cum boy confirmed. <laughs> uh, Rob says, that's bullshit. Horseshoe theory, it's magical thinking. Right, horseshoe theory is a theory exists, but yes, I disagree with it. It's not reality. Like horseshoe theory is a thing people believe. It's not something that doesn't mean anything. Uh, Lord says, who do you think QAnon is, Matt? I honestly don't know, but I do know there's a number of different threads bringing people to a number of different people who could be Q. I, I, I need to... This should honestly be its own thing, episode. Lord says, QAnon is Donald Trump himself. Trump's not that smart. He would have given away who he was almost immediately. Okay, politics is going to explain that GoFundMe thing. A guy on Twitter that some of us were muffos with started a GoFundMe for his disabled wife and used the money to buy vape juice. She found out and outed him. Can you DM me this stuff? It's not something, I guess, to put someone on blast, really. I don't know. Like... I'm not going to name a name unless you, maybe I should. That's pretty messed up. But I really want to look further into this for my own personal enjoyment. That's really funny. DM me the info. 
He was a decently big left Twitter account? Oh, no, I definitely got to know. Oh, it seems like everyone enjoyed my uh, my bad practice math. <laughs> Kennedy says, I just got called the fuck out. Well, everyone else is just LOLing. Cool. Perfect. Matt's savage as fuck, says uh, Ryan. <laughs> Dank says Sam can't afford me either right Ryan says I miss Kelly uh, it would be dope if MR got the old band back together but fused it with the new band because everyone is good as hell right Dorsey uh, Evan yep Alex says Matt go on Mike from PA absolutely I will Let, let contact me please Mike from PA Dorian says, is Mike from PA just on Twitch or elsewhere too? Listen, let me know. I will 100%. Oh, we got some news here. Politics says, Hickenlooper dropping out tomorrow. Oh, no. Who will take his tens of supporters? Not Bernie, I'm sure. It feels like the guy was in strictly to bash socialism. And Medicare for All, right? He was just going after Bernie over and over again. It was ridiculous. Dorian says there's an AstroTurf movement to get Hick to run for Senate in Colorado. But we have, we have like six better candidates already running. Yeah, forget Hick and Looper. Ryan says, can you get Beto to drop out with him? Rob says, we all love you, Matt. Stay cool. Arkanoi says, Hickenlop my legs off. <laughs> Bullwhip says, he'll bring the Hickenlooper clout. Politics says, anyone polling in single digits is wasting space and debate time. Right. Well, I would like some people in there to, to help split some of the voting. But yeah, for the most part, yeah. Kennedy says, the majority port chat is so much fun though. Right, but you can't follow anything, especially if you were to read comments on the show. Jay Jareba says, has Sam ever read the chat? Well, back when I was there, Sam read IMs, right? But what IM systems exist anymore? Well, how does Sam even do do that now? You can see, the, I do watch the majority port now, but I can't actually remember the last time I watched an episode and stuck around for the IMs or happened to watch a whole episode that he just didn't read IMs. Is that, is that even a thing anymore on the show? I don't even... Grim says, Q is me, Q is you. Ah, bringing up that crazy family doctor video. Oh my God, if you haven't seen this, this woman who says she's a family doctor and I looked it up, she's legit a family doctor, at least on Yelp with people saying they've gone to her. Legit family doctor, a practicing physician. Filming a video in her car about how much she loves QAnon and believes in it. And one of her lines is, Q is me, Q is you. It's crazy. I got to play it on the show. Crazy. Next show. Politics says, hell yeah, Eureka's Castle was dope. Kennedy says, isn't Dorsey doing MR social media stuff now? Is he? Is he? Lord says that Q9 woman is kind of hot. I don't, whatever he do, he does it for you, man. Okay. Politics says she looks like my ex wife. Well, I guess my listeners have a type the QAnon type, I assume. <laughs> Uh, Grim says she's whack. Thank you, Grim, for uh, bringing me some hope here. Dank says it used to be through AIM. Right, that's what I mean, right? Like when I was there, it was through AIM. They have a built-in app IM system. IM's through the MR app, says Politics and Dank, right? Okay. Okay. All right. But is Dorsey back at Majority Point, really? Maybe I should reach out. Hey, Sam. 
I heard you're hiring all the old MR people. Why don't you throw me a side gig? <laughs> all right, folks. That is the show for today. See you all next week. I will let you all know real soon about the date. It's booked pretty much. I just want to confirm a few more things on my end, and you know, I'll let you know when I'll be back on the majority board. But it's it's very soon. You will know in short in due time. My dad with the final I am of the comment of the day. Uh, well, Zootmaster says she's got those stab you in your sleep because the Lord told her to kind of eyes. <laughs> and my dad with the final comment. Uh, well, Dorian says, good show, Matt. Thank you. And my dad with the final comment. That Dr. Q lady reminds me of the San Diego suicide cult leader. Folks, see you all next time on Doomed. My dad says, yeah, Heaven's Gate. Great show, Matt, says Dank. Take care, everybody.